everyone, and welcome to WCO TV's favorite game show, You Call That Culture? For round two, we are going to be doing a manager makeover. <laughs> My name is Janetta, and I'd like to welcome back our two contestants, Tim and Jojo, who each scored one point in round one, and are back and ready to try our new questions. Hello, Jojo. Hello, Tim. Hi. Hi. So this round is all about helping managers become more mindful in culturally challenging situations. This is how we're going to play. Each contestant is given a manager profile and an intercultural situation to manage. You have to guess how you think the manager would normally respond in the situation. Then, your opponent has to explain the intercultural situation and do the makeover by saying what the more mindful behavior would be. That sounds tough. Well, let's do one question and try it out, shall we? Good idea. The first manager profile is the savvy, busy, and stressed young lady named Chris. Chris is 29 years old and recently married with a new home, baby, and dog. She was a product manager until the most recent reorganization created a separate product marketing group. Responsible for the go-to-market planning for several products, she now spends most of her time attending meetings, answering emails, writing content for salespeople, and helping salespeople with their customer accounts. She is always stressed and has trouble staying focused because of her many interruptions during the day. Now here, is the incident. She is in charge of training a new employee named Mr. Mohammed from Pakistan. Mr. Mohammed worked at the government in Lahore, Pakistan, where his job conferred high status on him and his family. He can read and write English easily, but he has more difficulty understanding oral English. His supervisor, Chris, explains to Mr. Muhammad how to run the photocopier. She speaks English rapidly, explaining while she photocopies. She asks him, do you understand? He replies emphatically, yes. Chris needs 15 copies of a memo. Mr. Muhammad says he will do it soon. Chris then goes for lunch. When Chris returns from lunch, she sees that the copies are not done. Mr. Mohammed says he was too busy. Jojo, what do you think Chris is likely to do? Well, given Chris's profile, I say that she's too busy and stressed to have the time to figure out why Mr. Mohammed isn't doing the job. She will just look mad and do it herself. Correct. Now, Tim, what do you think is going on in this situation? Well, I think Mr. Mohammed feels that he's lost status in this job and he doesn't understand where the hierarchy is or should be. He also probably didn't understand how to run the copier. I mean, I have a copier, a fancy one, at my office and you practically need a degree to operate it. Well, anyway, so in order to not lose face, Mr. Mohammed just pretended that he was busy. Well, you two are really on top of your game today because that is right. Now, what could Chris do to be more mindful in the situation? Tim? Well, she needs to slow down for a minute and consider the situation from his point of view. If she's too busy to train him, she should assign someone else to train him on the copier and stay with him until he actually knows what to do. She should also be very polite and courteous to him and say she is honored to have a distinguished person from Pakistan working for her. That way he won't feel so low. Like I said, you are doing great. Shall we try another one? This time, Tim gets the easy question, Well, Jojo has to figure out the problem and the more mindful behavior. I'm ready. 
Me too. So the next profile is the enthusiastic about his team type. Sal is an older manager in his late 40s who has been a favorite of employees for many years. He offers his subordinates an enormous amount of trust. He's entertaining and lighthearted, but professional. He believes in growing along with all of his team, is always reading something new, thinking outside the box, and wondering how things can be done better. He is a mentor who generates enthusiasm and gives honest feedback without being demeaning. People can come to Sal with ideas and he will listen to them and implement whatever he can. This is the intercultural problem he has. One of Sal's employees, Mai Chen, came to Canada from Guangdong province in China. She felt lucky to emigrate because she was a member of a non-government approved religious group in China and she feared persecution. She now lives in an apartment building with several other Chinese families. Every day, three ladies from the same building take the 515 bus to their job at a hospital cafeteria. Mai Chen and her friends enjoy working at the hospital cafeteria. Their supervisor admires their efficiency and hard work, and he finds they are a great team. Lately, he has been getting complaints from the other kitchen workers who say the Chinese women are always jabbering away in Chinese. One of the hospital administrators told him, sure, we need the extra help, but can't you teach them English before bringing them down here with everyone else? Tim. How do you think Sal is likely to respond in this situation? I think because Sal is such a team player kind of guy that he will get the Chinese and the other workers together in a meeting and try to talk things out. But he may not get the Chinese workers to talk. Correct! <laughs> now, Jojo, what do you think is going on in this scenario? I think the Chinese workers are together all the time. They have no motivation to speak English because they live and work together. Now, the other workers are resentful because they feel excluded and because they think the Chinese workers should really put more effort to learn English in the new country. Correct! Very good! Now, how could Sal practice mindfulness here? Mm, he should talk to the Chinese separately and to the others separately to let them know that they need to work to make the others feel included. Then he should mix the workers so that they are not all together all the time with their own cultural groups. Finally, I think he can assign buddies and mentors to the Chinese workers so they get to know people outside their own culture. I think it also helps to have a potluck meal where the staff shares food and games together. That will help break down the ice and they will feel more like friends. Fantastic. That means three points for each of our contestants. Once again, they are tied. It will take another round to see what happens and to see who gets entered in the final prize draw of a six-month trip around the world. But while our viewers are waiting, you too can practice managerial makeover. We've posted some manager profiles and intercultural incidents to our site for you to try out. The multiple choice questions will help you select answers. Good luck.